Hi, and welcome to the tutorial where we're going to paint our barrel, and I'm going to be doing the hearts with you. So I want to go through a couple of things that will help make the process easier. One thing I like to paint with is parchment paper, just your usual parchment paper from baking, and it's great because then you just throw it in the garbage. Art glitter glue is fabulous for attaching this, uh, your papers to the wood. And then I like a file, just a, a now file, but actually we'll be having files here very soon that you can purchase to work on your projects. And then also I like to have a foam paintbrush. They're the best because you throw them in the garbage and they do a nice smooth cover. Then you want, of course, a pencil because we're going to be tracing onto our cardstock. And of course your cardstock. I will be using the same authentic. Valentine line because it's just gorgeous and then also your barrel now one thing to remember is every month so let me show you these have a flat I know you hard to see from this angle but every month you'll be able to change these and they do sit really well mine's been sitting in the entrance way this one was made just to sit in front of your little barrel it still can fit up there but your other flat pieces take the space then um, the button it's just a wooden button, and we will actually be having these soon in stock. Or you can just use a button out of your stash, and you can also paint them to match. And we will also have some colors when they are made available. So on here, so let me just get out some papers that I'm going to use. You do not, as you can see from the size, it's made a lot of different papers. Love this one. And I have four of the little wood pieces so I'm going to be using these two and I will use the front and the back then for my barrel I actually used it's from it's from another authentic collection but let me tell you what I'm going to do on this you can also paint it so if you want to paint it as you can see I did a barrel and I believe this was I should have grabbed the paper I will pull it out before the video is done because we are going to cover it. You can either paint these or you can cover it. So let me put these away and show you everything that is in your little package. So the hearts, as you can see, and foundations decor, such a fun monthly project. We're just going to take our hearts out. And the nice thing is it's already beautifully finished wood. Look at that. No sawdust, nothing when you open your package totally up to you. I will be painting my edges white. You can do white, you can do pink, any color you like. And then we'll open the barrel. So your barrel has your band pieces. Now they will fit, the longest one sits at the top and they're going to actually sit wherever you like them to sit. And your barrel. You can paint, again, any color you like. One thing that I was thinking of is maybe doing this one with some black at the end. We will go ahead and antique it in, inside here. Covering this with paper, I'm going to be honest with you, I did give it a try. It's, it's, it's kind of hard with your slats, but it can be done if you want yours papered. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I'm going to go ahead, and this one was painted using... A desert sand it's just a sandy color so this time I'm going to do this one different and I'm going to use white this one is your creme coat just white and the paints can be picked up at Joann's or Hobby Lobby and oops, let's go ahead and remove our little card so we're just going to start painting the back you definitely could cover with paper if you want. But then again, you want to make sure it's a pretty neutral paper. So the top is painted and I can do the sides. This dries pretty fast. 
and then it's up to you how many coats. I always do two to three coats unless you want the grain to show. And as you can see with the foam brush, it goes on so smooth. I'm going to show you in those little grooves when I'm done here. If you want to clean those out, I do want to get paint in there so I don't see any of the wood. I am using just my pick that I used in my paper crafting. And a wet wipe, water soluble paint, so you don't have to worry. And I am just dragging it through. I want this to, you know, be prominent. I, I want those grooves prominent on mine. I'm just going to move that over and see I did paint the back and the sides of my hearts again I'm going to leave the bottom for last so I can sit it up while it's drying what I love about foundations decor is every piece comes so smooth and clean and no sawdust Oh, actually, I, we are going to lay this now. So we'll do the back side and the bottom after this part dries. And, oh, I'm not, you know what? I'm not painting the other side. Unless you want to put paper on both sides. So let's go ahead and get this bottom. You should be able to get it while it's just sitting here if you're using your brush, foam brush. And this is the heart that has the full heart, so it's not going to, it won't sit like on a flat bottom. first coat don't worry about I don't worry too much about the drips because that's where my fingernail file is going to come into play so let's go ahead and do the bottom we're going to layer it flat I'm not worried about how the side looks Now this pick is just from Harbor Freight and they come in a package and I know they still have them. So if you want to grab them, you really should because they're so handy for a lot of different projects.
And see, that is just about how fast that does dry. I mean, it's not super dry, but it is dry to the touch. So let's do the bottom. And let's let the, this set. We'll come back and do a second coat. And I will go get the wood grain paper so that we can cover our bands. Okay, this is a leftover piece from Frontier. This is Frontier 9. And we may have some in stock at Country Craft Creations, but there's a lot of other wood grains out there in different colors and patterns. So let's see, I know Authentic has a couple, and if you have any of your um, rugged or, or your um, Frontier leftover, or you can paint these. Now, I was thinking of just painting these black. So what I'm going to do, because of the black and the white, what I'm going to do is show you how to do one. And I'm actually going to turn it over and paint it black so that you have both choices, just in case you don't have that wood grain paper. And like I said, it's an older line. It came out, and I know we had tons of it this summer. Or you may have some in your stash. So what I like to do, first of all, you can tell that this is your top piece, I mean at the bottom piece, and it's going to curve upwards. See how that curves upward? I have this kind of a little round. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an X, because that's the front of that one, and that is the front of this one. Now the easiest way to do this, turn this over, and I'm going to now put the front down, and yes, it's not 100% easy to see, but you're going to trace with your pencil, and it moved. We're going to trace with our pencil each piece. need to move the water. Now we are going to just cut those out. And I cut on the inside of my pencil line just a little bit. And I will also distress this with my distress ink after I put it on. Okay, remember we have that X on the front. So this is going to go this way. And I'm not worried that it's not sitting completely perfect because we're, we're going to trim it up and then distress it. That happens a lot. And I'll go ahead with you and let's cut out the second piece. Even though I'm going to paint mine black, I will still be able to adhere this other side. That's the great thing. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put these on both sides. I remember a piece of it does stick out. And even though it's the back, you don't see it. But this is going to make it so now that little piece on mine will show wood grain. Okay. 
I add the adhesive right to the wood. And this is a great glue for this. You can Mod Podge. I don't like the way it wrinkles my paper. Sometimes I've had colors run, so I stick with the art glue. And you do want to heat it hot. Sorry. You do want to make sure you spread it and you push pretty hard. Kind of like your wall papering, papering your project. And then we'll do the same here. So I'm going to grab my chocolate ink, so I'll be using that in just a moment, and a couple different ways that you can trim this is with a straight edge. So if you have a lot hanging over, just take your straight edge here, and we're going to take our file. And the one thing with the file, go one direction. Don't go back and forth. You're going to pull it off. And you might have some distressing now. It looks great. I just take my ink pad and go right over the top. Don't want that distressing to show, but it feels in the spot, especially on that end. I did have a little shortness of the paper. Whoops. Oh, and we are getting new craft knives in. So while I was at the show for CHA, it was great. Um, we will be bringing in the 9 millimeters. They're back in stock. And I'm excited because they are great for these type of projects. I use mine for everything. Okay. about taking that brown off. Actually, that is from the laser that cut these. And that's where your distress ink comes to play and just fills that in nicely. There we go. I like these wood projects. They are relaxing. They're fun to display. I know my daughter fell in love with mine, so this is going to be hers. All right. Now, I'm going to go ahead. 
Well, you know, I, I do this. And I see that, and I love the wood grain. So I did want to do black. Let's just leave the wood grain for now. Okay. So we'll leave that for now. Instead of painting my band black, this is pretty much dry. So let's go ahead and, and get this second coat on the front. And you will want to do a second, I mean, you will want to do the back. This is really nice, heavy, thick, smooth wood. I, I'm so happy with the quality. This little guys are pretty much dry. Craft paint dries really fast. That's what I love about it. Now you could use a chalk paint. You can actually use almost any paint you like. And when you get tired of this color, you paint it a different color. Also, don't paint in your good clothes. And this is a great uh, project to do with the kids. to the back in just a moment. And I would suggest that we you let it dry a good 15-20 minutes after this last coat before putting on the paper. Wood project, projects are also, they're just a fun way to display that favorite paper of yours. And don't worry about perfection, because when we sand, you'll see if you, I, some of this paint's going to come off, because see I did a distressed look. I could always gone back and paint it over it, but I liked the dis, dis, a little distressed look with the paper. Now you may have a paper that distressed and doesn't look great, and you'll just take a fine brush and you can touch up the areas and repaint that. And sometimes you'll notice with your colors it will take maybe three coats. We'll look at it.
This little guy is the one that we will be doing the back and front. Oh, no, wait a minute. No, it's the same. You don't have to do the other side. I didn't. I did cover this one. Extra on there. Okay. Not a hundred percent dry. That is now dry enough that I can paint the back. And then we're going to let these dry for 15 to 20 minutes. Or you can paint these, go to bed, and then, and then pick up in the morning. And you can also, if you're really crazy perfection, you can sand in between coats. I don't. So I'm going to let that dry, and then I'll come back, we'll clean this up, and we will map the hearts. One thing to remember about wood projects is there really is no messing up, because you can sand it and take it off. So don't feel like, you know, oops, I made a mistake, because all you have to do is paint over it or sand it or put paper on there. It's great. What I've done is I've put a little bit of black paint here, and I have a fine tip little brush, doesn't matter really what kind. And what I'm doing is I'm going to get as much paint off, basically dry brush the black into the crevice, and it will smear just like that along with the white paint, and that's just fine. Some of the white paint in there was really deep, so it's not super dry. Like I said, if you get outside of the bounds, this is a wet white. Look at that. I'm going to clean that right up. Clean that right up on the edge. Smear it around a little bit, and it is a diaper white that is still wet. Okay? And all you want to do is drag it along there. Okay, paintbrush. Work your paintbrush like I'm doing there. And I can see some paint, so it is going to mix in there. That's just fine. And I'm going to smear it on the sides. Didn't mean to. That's just fine because now my wet wipe. And if I absolutely hated it, I could definitely paint it over. But I'm liking the black streaks that's happening in my wood. There's not a lot of them. There's just enough to give it a hint of that barrel kind of beat up wood. I've even done this with Q-tips. So if you don't have a, a paintbrush, you can just go along with the Q-tip. Same technique. and wipe it right off. This is also how I distressed my doors in my house. Needed to put a little gray over there. You think there's too much? Run your wet wipe over it quickly before it dries even more. I have a heat fan to the right of me. That's probably what you're hearing. And I'm really liking the way that looks. Now, in between uses of my paint, when I'm using a paintbrush, and I don't have water because I don't like to put my brushes in water. 
because then it's just too diluted. I wrap it in my wet diaper wipe, and we're just going to set that aside, and then I can wash it off when ready. Now, because I've used some black paint, I definitely do want to wash my hands off. So diaper wipes, crafter's best friend. I want to move that so I can get away from that black paint. Let's just tear that off. Throw my parchment paper in the garbage. We're good. See, and I've even cleaned my little pokey tool back in the bin. Now it's ready for paper craft. Okay, my barrel is ready now for these pieces. And as you can see, I did decide, yeah, not to paint it black, even though it would it would look cool. But you know what? <clears throat> I, mean, I think I'll get another one for Halloween and probably do that. Because you've got to admit, the price point is so great. Decide where you want those. Okay. Another art glue again. And I'm going to stay in the center. I'm not going to get it all over because you know some of it. There's just that tiny bit that's going to hang over the edge. Placement is totally, totally up to you, but let me give you an idea of where mine is. <clears throat> mine is 7 eighths of an inch in the center from the bottom, and then on the sides it's 1 inch because it curves up. So 7 eighths of an inch from the bottom. I'm going to hold this up. Just, I really looked. I don't know if my daughter's going to get this one. She might get the other one. So here's the other one really like this look. Such a fun project. Now don't worry about getting clear to the end because they do hang over depending on where you place them. Okay, with this paper, the black and white is really cool, but it looks really good on the other one too. Okay, so we're going to let our barrel dry. One thing I want you to check, did you get some lumps of paint? If you did, just take your file. Okay. Just sometimes you'll get a glob there. And you don't want a glob on your paper. Oh. That's not one that we're going to do. Oh, that's okay. Just so it feels smooth and flat. Okay. And you don't need, this is not, this is, um, let's go to 20. This isn't even 6 by 6. So you can do a lot with just your scraps. One side, the other side. This is where I only took two pieces. Ooh, that's pretty. Okay. Oh, polka dots. And then the hearts. So I'm going to lay out this one with the flower. And again, this is going to be my front side. I'm just making sure it does fit. And I don't want to draw on that. So see, it needs to be here. I need it to go like so. So that's my back side. You can also do both sides if you want. flower in there. Okay. And I can turn it over and straighten it up. And I'll draw my heart on this side. And if you're working with the snowflake, you know, where it's quite intricate, it really is best to draw it. Don't put your paper on and then 
think you're going to cut away on some of the intricate pieces like snowflakes because you you're not you need to draw it first. And again, I'm going to cut just barely on the inside of my pencil. And you can use a distress ink, or you can also will be you can touch up with the paint, or you can leave that distress look. And then your pencil marks aren't going to show because they're on the back side if they do happen to be there. I do not worry about trimming my paper up until after. Let's just put this on. Using my scraper or spatula. Uh, it's just a plastic scraper that I pick up at Michael, or uh, sorry, Lowe's, Harbor Freight, or, um, well, what's the other one? Lowe's, Home Depot. And you do want to try and get everything at the edge. Make sure that paper is down. Pretty cute, isn't it? So we're going to set that aside to dry. Now, I think the one that's going to be on the ground, which is my solid heart, that's a really pretty print, too. Let me see if I can get another heart on here. This way. And it looks like I can. And hold my thumb just about where I need that to be. And you can feel, okay, feel with this. Oh, we better straighten this baby up. And you can also put it up to the light. Actually, I'm going to be able to get this on here for another heart, so I won't need to wait. Oh, look at that. Shoot. I will not have to will not have to use another piece of paper. Whoops, wrong side. Cute. So On there. Did get a little over on the glue. So this is a yucky paintbrush I use to clean up glue. I learned this from when I used to get my nails done. She'd clean up the acrylic, and I thought, wow, that works so great with our um, paint. Or yeah the glue when we're doing on projects. And that will kind of like self-clean now. Okay, 
paint. The important thing is we let this dry and our art glue will dry pretty quickly. So I'm going to do red and it looks like I don't even have to cut another piece of paper. So my trellis, look at that. It's always nice when we can save our papers. Actually, let me get that back. Show you what we're going to do. And we just follow those lines. Just a little thinner on the edges so I don't have so much come through. But it dries pretty fast. I'm loving the look of that. You can also do that with brown paint. Now the polka dots. So this doesn't uh, matter too much. So I'm going to put this down here, kind of at the bottom, but this is rounded, so I'm going to have to still cut. See how easy that is? And then every month, we'll, you'll be able to change the decorations in your house. Right now we have the snowflakes, so if you want to get caught up with January. We have the valentines in stock, and we also have the four-leaf clovers. And then next month we'll have April, May, and June in stock. And we also have the new welcome signs coming. Lots of choices for home decorations, and these are awesome in bedrooms, on dressers. They're just darling for the kids, grandkids. Okay, I'm going to go back to this one because I need to check and see, do I need to get any of this off? And it's really best if there's any big pieces hanging over the edge that you, you trim them. And if you can use your little scissors... Or those your knives that will work now you've got to remember when you start this one you are going to lose some of your paint on the edge so I'll show you what we're going to have for a look a really cool distressed look and if you don't like it you can then go back even using your finger and touch up with white paint or you can use a really fine brush so we want to smooth the paper down. And you can also use a Distress ink. If you have a red or a pink, and then 
see I have a little bit of distressing. If you can see that's not a lot. And you can also then, I'm moving the file more onto my paper. I'm distressing the edges of the paper to match the distressed things that I've done now on these edges. That was some glue. And also, I just turned it over so I have the file side that has the finer. And right now, this is just a normal nail file. We will be having the ones in stock from the company, and um, they'll be very expensive and so convenient. But they're they're um, they're nice and square like this one. Now there's our first one. I'll leave the backs plain. And the second one we did was our big heart. So again, see I've got some overhang. Let's take our scissors. And I'm not trying to be perfect. I'm just trying to bring it down to about the edge of the wood. And then I'll use the really coarse side first and then the fine side. Okay, I need to really clean up in there. Remember, don't go like this. You're going to come up and you're going to rip the paper. So just go down. Now the fine side. This one, I don't know, oh, I do have a few pieces to come off. One reason I'm not using the knife, I don't want to scuff up the paint. Not a lot of cleanup to this because we really... Um, saved a lot of time by drawing out the heart by tracing so you don't have a lot of cleanup of the paper okay, at all. And then our little polka dot. turn this off now. Sorry, but the heat just makes it dry faster so that we can keep working. And I know, I hope the noise wasn't too much. our barrel up. I'm going to, I know you guys can't see, but you can see on yours. And you set these up. Cute, cute, really cute. Let me see if I can bring the camera in this way and yes, when you oh, pick them up, they do fall off. But let's get a button if you want, a button from your stash. Let's see what I've got here. Not quite the red. So I just have this big thing of buttons. 
crystal clear. That might be cute. And I have a white one, like I used before. I think I'll go with the white and some wine. And a couple of things you can do to decorate the front, I'll show you in just a moment, is your pop dots. Now you can also use, you could take a small magnet and put it right here. If you wanted a bow or something there each month, maybe a cut apart from the paper line, or like I said, a bow, gosh, just about anything. Now on the back of here, I'm just using a pop dot. I have found that these work really well with buttons, and then I'm able to use the art glue. Put that right down. But what I wanted to show you, I want to cut out two hearts. I'm just taking it from the scraps of paper. And you can tie a bow around your barrel to change the looks each month. Or you can just make a bow. And let's, let me see here. Okay. Because what I, what I found with pop dots, they're not the most, um, they're not the stickiest things in the world. And that's one reason, reason I use adhesive with them. And see, once you put it down, or you can get a one that is meant to be released, um, restickable or whatever they're called. And I'll stick my hearts there for this month. And then I can just take these off. I can throw them away or take that pop dot off, and it's just a normal foam dot. No, oh, they go this way. And now my barrel is ready for display. And then each month, let me grab le uh, next month. And I also use a photo of uh, fly. I don't use that paper. I used um, didn't use that. I used authentic clover. You know what? I hope I don't have to take that back. I may have used last year's. I got to look at the new lines. There's been so many. Anyway. Clover, you're going to do the exact same way. Just get out your, your papers that you've had from the years past or that you just bought. Now, I did just paint this in a green that I got at the craft store. And now I can change out my burrow and I can change out my hearts. They'll come right off and ready to go for next month. Painting, like I said, and cutting is the exact same way. And so if you have any questions at all, be sure to visit uh, – countrycraftcreations.com where you can purchase your your kits. You purchase the barrel once or you might want two or three because you're going to want them for gifts. The price point is fabulous. And then I will be coming back. I won't do the 
this one with you, and I won't redo the barrel unless I do something really funky and different, you know, um, with with the front of it. Then um, I will do the Eastern Spring, and I'll do those in two videos for you so that you can see exactly how I'm going to do my Eastern Spring. And thank you so much for joining me in this tutorial. I hope you had a lot of fun. And see, how, let me show you really quick the difference. So I did different paper. Got more of a shabby chic look here, a little more rustic there. <coughs> and they are available at countrycraftcreations.com. And don't forget to show us your finished project in our Facebook group at Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations. That's also where we keep up the latest news. So thank you, everybody. And I'll see you in our next tutorial.